We'll call the finance committee to order here. We've got a set of minutes in front of us. Motion to approve. Got a motion. Here, second. Second. Got a second. Any discussion? In favor say aye. 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 All right. Any public comment for the finance committee? Seeing none, we'll close that. And we'll turn it over to Mr. Maynard. Uh, start just looking at the minutes. One of the last, the next to last sentence um, we talked about that we still needed to review and approve the revised uh, financial management policies, which are presented uh, the first thing in your packet. Um, there are uh, a couple of changes. Uh, basically, everything in here has been approved. As as our procedures in the finance office change. And as we uh, make changes, like we made a change a few years ago to the bid limit, to change the bid limit from 15 to 25,000, those changes need to be reflected in this book. So uh, this is an update. There are two, um, two new things in here. One of them is not really, it's just a clarification. So if you look on page 26, the next to last page, where we have an addendum to purchasing policy there, uh, the one from... Um, the, the bottom at the, the one of the bottom of the page we previously on the, the uh, where it goes this policy does not apply to jury duty uh, this is, I should probably read what it says Wilson County will not pay for meals or snacks directly or indirectly for employees volunteers or others in the performance of work related activity except for items recommended by a nationally recognized organization this policy does not apply to jury duty Gatorade furnished to firemen it used to end right there it now includes road employees, which I think has always been done, but it was not specified in the policy, and it should be, uh, because obviously they work in some pretty tough environments as well. Uh, the other change that was made is, um, let's see, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, same, same section, last sentence. Food purchased by the health department for board meetings and educational events. There's been a couple of situations where the health department has hosted some regional type meetings or one time they did a, uh, a WIC class where they wanted to buy food. Is that what it was? Um, prenatal. Prenatal. Um, and so uh, that has been added. That is, sub that is subject to your approval. You can tell me right now to strike that and I'll strike it, but it's in here um, pending your approval um, and if you want to take the whole thing like we've done before and you guys take a look at it you're welcome to the uh, my only thing is that um, if we go back and we look at the, at the history here uh, you know some of my some of my handouts in here are where when we met on April 21st 2022 so this committee does not meet very often but I'm more than happy if we can schedule another meeting for you guys to have the opportunity because it's probably a different committee. I'm pretty sure we handed them out at the last thing, but we have made a couple of changes since then, which I just need to point out. So this purchasing policy is what we're looking at right this second? Yes, sir. Nothing under, okay. Yeah, the, the whole thing is, is uh, everything from when bids are required to how, uh, how documents flow through Skyward, who's, who has what responsibility to do what to, in order to get an invoice approved and paid, uh, purchase orders, so on and so forth. That's, um, again, I have no problem at all with, with people taking it and reading it. I just need to have, if we're going to do that, I need to have a follow-up meeting sooner rather than later because um, this has been hanging out here since uh, October 16, 2023 was the last time I handed it. Just a, just a suggestion, since we got 27 pages and I don't, you know, I can digest what I read. Absolutely. Maybe table it and, and meet prior to the commission meeting on the 16th, that would give us 11 nights. Whatever you guys want to do, I'm good with. They just have to let me know. I'm just asking that we do it soon. That's all I'm asking. Okay. Is that a motion? You're on the table it now. No, it's, 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 it's just an idea for yeah. discussion. 
No, I'm, I mean, you can take it, but don't call it typing. Okay. That's, that's, that's a whole separate process. All right, well, okay. We'll, we'll postpone it. There you go. <laughs> I'll make a motion that we postpone it and vote on it on prior to the commission meeting on September 16th. Okay. Second. All right, we got a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Uh, the next one I'm going to get uh, Brian to help me with as we go. There's two different policies in here uh, for WEMA. One is a um, financial hardship waiver. In fact, Brian, do you want to cover the hardship waiver first? Yes, sir, I can. Go, go ahead. So this is, a, it was approved several years ago, but there's a couple of little adjustments we would like to propose on that. Uh, under number two on the discounts and payments, uh, prior to that, under bullet point number two, if a hospital provided a discount in the previous hardship, we only matched to 90%, but we're proposing this. If they say 97 or 100 or whatever they say, let us just match what they say and, and just be done with it. Because that other 10%, we're probably not going to get it anyway because it's self pay. This is what it is. Uh, the, on the second page, under the calculation of hardship, uh, Previously, it was it was very confusing and four people could look at it and come up with four different opinions. But this one is very specific with examples and it refers back to the most current uh, U.S. Department of Health and Human Services poverty guidelines. So that gives us a, a dedicated federal guideline to go by and um, <coughs> rails to look at each side of that on, on based off of that, what percentage might be available for a discount. Under number six, under employee benefits, previously we only had uh, county employees minus any deductibles or co-pays. They would have to pay all that, but if there's anything left over, kind of as a, an employee benefit per se, uh, it would just be written off. So we would propose to add dependents if they had a family insurance. It would include any dependents they had on that and also include retirees. So we didn't have that previously. If they retired from the county with paid insurance. And then number seven would add the veteran service membership uh, member discount. So if they were in the military uh, currently or previously, as long as they had documentation and proof of that, they could get a 50% discount. One thing I thought about a while ago that we might want to entertain uh, as well, uh, back on the first page, there's a 25% discount. If somebody comes in and says, hey, I just want to pay my bill in full, that's an incentive to get them to pay it, uh, but not kind of like you can't do a special on the coupon at a store. If you get that 50, not allowing the 25 to go with that 50 for 75, it's just you get that particular 50% only discount as far as veterans. Uh, and then that's really the only differences uh, from, the, from the prior one. <clears throat> These are really two separate things, so you probably ought to consider them one at a time. <clears throat> On this line here, I know you didn't go over it, it says that if the remaining balance cannot be paid in full, payment plan may be instituted at a minimum of $25 a month. Correct. What happens if they can't meet that either? There, our current billing company, that's their recommendations is 25, okay. because if you do 10, I mean, you're going to drag that out forever. Oh, yeah. And that's their, their minimum. Uh, if they absolutely can't do that, we're okay with allowing them if they say, hey, I, I can do 15 or I can do 10, and that's all they can do. Yeah. That's just the, the, the suggestion. We're asking for 25. And, and try to stick with that. But And I don't know that we've ever had that situation, but we did have that discussion. That's a good point with the with the insurance, or not insurance company, I'm sorry, with our billing company that, you know, pay. If, if they can do it, fine. If they can't, work out whatever you can. Yeah. I got you. Okay. Aaron, what's our process on this? It's just, just got to be approved here, or does it that go to the county commission? I think this is just a policy issue, in my opinion. And the finance committee sets the policy. Yes, sir. I, I agree. I just want to see yes, what you thought. Okay. 
It's the will of our committee. Make a motion. We'll approve. Second. Okay, you got a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Okay. Next. Um, this may make, make more sense if we cover it in reverse order. So let's go to the very back page, which is a uh, accounts receivable reconciliation report from our um, ambulance billing company. So your beginning, your first column is your your beginning accounts receivable. Uh, so you started the year with with two and a half million. You build eight million contractual allowances as your your discounts and things. So you get down the net charges of six. According to them, we got payments in of uh, almost three point seven million. We had write offs of two point three million. Now those write offs, the vast majority of those are going to a collection agency. Okay. Um, so if you would entertain me for a minute and go to this page. If we, if we look at that, that again, that, that one that we were just looking at, the, the accounts receivable reconciliation report, you're ending accounts receivable balance. Well, let's look at your beginning because that'll make more sense because we're doing the 23 year. So your ending, your ending balance for 23 um, would equal your beginning balance for 24. So your beginning AR of 2514000 that's patient, uh, that's patient charges, ambulance receivable. Uh, which is listed as accounts receivable, which is highlighted, which you'll see is 14619000 That's how much is sitting. The difference between that is what's sitting with the collection agency and has been sitting with the collection agency for years. That 2310000 you add that much year after year after year, and you collect very little of it. So basically, you wind up showing on your books almost $15 million in accounts receivable, $13 million uncollectible. And you can get rid of all that with this policy, which basically uh, I crossed out the annual write-off policy. At the end of the fiscal year, all uncollected billing accounts in collections will be officially written off from the county's accounts receivable. In other words, we won't show it on our books in accounts receivable anymore. It doesn't mean we'll stop collecting on it. It means we're not going to show it on the books. Uh, I think the second sentence sort of says that. Despite the write-off, collection efforts will continue to be made by the collection agency to recover outstanding amounts from these accounts. We recover it. It's no big deal. We can still apply it to the patient balance, but there's no reason for us to be carrying $15 million in patients receivable uh, and having to do this complex accounts receivable calculation for uh, how much is allowance for doubtful accounts when basically if you would approve it, what we would carry as accounts receivable would be what was what the billing company says as accounts receivable, not what's sitting with the collection company. You lost me. Where's that policy we're talking about? I'm sorry, sir. That's this one. Do you have that one? I don't know if I do or not. I got a lot of paper. Will you pass that one down, yes, please? I'm sorry. No, I didn't have that one. Thank you. Sorry about that, sir. Uh, no need to apologize. The, uh, the other thing I know uh, I'm giving you a lot to think about, it does say here a couple of things down where I, I, I put a star. It says the Wilson County Finan uh, Finance Office will maintain accurate records of accounts written off, including the amounts. Um, Brian uh, sort of wrote this, and we haven't really discussed it. I don't think that's true. I don't think we will have a detailed list. Uh, there will be a detailed list with the collection uh, company. Uh, the billing company will know what they turned over to collections, et cetera. But as far as a detailed list, patient by patient, of uh, accounts written off, we will not have that in finance office. Basically, we we're, you're asking us to set a policy that allows you to book, get it off of our books. Book accounts receivable at what our billing company says it is without considering what's been in collections for 15 years. Okay. Again, doesn't mean we're going to stop collecting it, although really we ought to have a conversation with our billing company and say, you know, at some point you guys need to 
write some stuff off because you know their their number our our number on the books with our collection company just continues to grow and they can't possibly be pursuing all of it and a lot of it I'm sure they've already determined is not worth pursuing for the cost that it would just so I can understand when you carry a large accounts receivable balance like this, mm -hmm. what is that? Say, what is that saying to somebody that's looking at your books that knows what they're looking at? Well, if they know what they're looking at, they look at the line right below it and go, "Okay, fourteen point six minus thirteen uncollectible is one point six million net accounts receivable." If they know what they're looking at. Okay. So it's not necessarily a liability we're looking at or anything like that? No, sir. So it's just kind of just making our books look cleaner? Cleaner. Let yes, sir. Let me ask you this. Yes, sir. Let's read that again. At the end of the fiscal year, all uncollected billing accounts and collectibles will officially be written off from the county accounts receivable. On the books, yes, On sir. On the books. But then it says you're going to continue to try. That's correct. Just because we write them As off. As it comes them. back in, though, how does it go back in the books? Where does it go? I mean, is there a, So they still, just because revenue? just because we write it off, and Brian will have to comment on this because they do the ambulance billing over there. Just because we write it off, it's, it's a paper transaction. They still have detail of uh, the patients that owe money, uh, whether it's in collections or wherever it happens to be. Because when that money comes in, they have to be able to apply it to a patient account. So if we get money from collections, right. it comes into our office and Andy deposits it into um, mm -hmm. to the trustee's office and it, it goes back in the, yeah. in the and, funds. Yeah. Same way if it's uh, not in collections. But my, and help me if I'm wrong, the way I read this, every year at the end of that physical year, you're only going to be able to collect for one year. At the end of the year, you're writing it off. No. We, this is an accounting, uh, this is not a legal um I'm not saying legally I'm going to suspend collection activities. What I'm saying is from an accounting standpoint, mm -hmm. I'm not going to carry $13 million that I've already determined is uncollectible on the books. That's all I'm really saying. I'm I got a question. Mm -hmm. uh, like, I guess what Jeff's kind of talking about, like when we say we're going to write it off, how are we going to, we know we got a good company, but how are we going to know if they say, well, they wrote it all paper? I'm not going to tell them I got that million dollars. You know what I'm saying? The payment. Yeah. How are we going to keep up with that? Does that make sense? Chad, they would never know what we've written off or hadn't written off, number one. I mean, they could they could assume, but look, it's in the collection. The collection company, it's in their best interest to collect. That's so how they get paid. That's, what they're That's paid. how they get paid is to collect. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to say... It's kind of an honor system. We wrote it off. We don't it's know. not really an honor system. We know there is there is detail of what what that balance is. I'm not saying it right. I'm just saying is mm -hmm. I don't know. It don't seem right. I know. Uh, it's why uh, there's some minutes attached where we discussed this back in April of 2022, uh, both at the finance committee and but previous to that at the emergency management mm -hmm. committee. Yeah, I remember. But we never came. Well, I thought we wrote all that off. We never, we never actually approved doing. It. We got right up to the edge, and and then didn't approve doing it. Well, I thought we got in the EMA that time, and we. Was EMA there. did approve it, which is how it made it to here. I got you. Yeah. 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 But that we approved that just to say we're never going to collect this no job. Right. No, no, if if this person was to win the lottery, come into an inheritance, if, if, if the collection agency could figure out a way to collect it. Now, you can't get blood from attorney. Right? You don't want to carry people to court who can't pay because basically that's costing you money. Uh, so it's still going to show up. People that, you know, we are, we are not basically, what I, the point that I need to make is that this has nothing to do with us saying, okay, we are not going to collect from John Smith. Right. John Smith, it's still on record that John Smith owes us money, but the collection agency and, and our billing system, uh, every, everywhere possible, it's still on record that John Smith owes us money. Aaron, 
Can we use another word besides writing off? <laughs> yeah. um, that's, what's, that's the confusing yeah. part. Expanded. Yeah. Uh, you really can't. Um, oh, so, so if you want to be um, euphemistic, uh, we will only carry in accounts receivable what is currently uh, outstanding. outstanding with our billing company. <laughs> I guess I'm kind of thinking about this. If if Ruth Ann pays her $1,000, they're like, look, we've been after that person for four years, and here it is. They could just, we would never know they got it, right? Well, how would you know you got it today? Well, because it's on the books, right? But it's still on the books. It's just not in this number. This is just a this this is a this is a computation that I do. I'm just saying like we're dependent on this the hurt this company to make sure we're right this off they're gonna send us the money. Yeah. Um, well again, I'm not saying any I'm not telling the company's not writing it off. The company's not writing it off. No, they're not writing it off. So how do we know they're gonna give us the money if it's been paid? I guess what I can If they chose... I know they're getting a percentage. Well, here's the thing. Okay, here's how I would know. Uh, but So once it goes to collections, okay, now it's it's in the hands of the collection company. The collection company is completely in charge of it. Brian's not calling the collection company every month, or he's not getting a report from the collection agency every month, probably. Brian, you correct me if I'm wrong. I Same. think they send one of, on a case okay. every month or whatever it this is. is this is what we collected, okay? If they choose, if they collect a thousand dollars from somebody and choose not to tell me, I don't have any way to figure that out now. It's probably a crime. They pro I'm sure it is. I mean, it definitely is. <laughs> it seems like we need to know every month what they're getting. We're not getting nothing. Right, but again, what? How would I prove? What you're talking about is how do I know beyond a shadow of a doubt? That they gave me every penny. I guess all thing I'm just saying is, if we just write and say we're going to write it all, if we we're not coming. I don't know. It's just kind of confusing. Yeah, yeah. It's basically been written off of your accounts receivable in the ledger. Yeah, deleted from the ledger. Actually, in your ambulance billing, you're still accounting for whoever it is that still owes you money, even if they owed it five years ago. So that that accounting system that they use is ongoing. Mm -hmm. This is the snapshot of, you know, like right. on your financial statements that goes into your audit. That's what you're talking about. So you're talking about a one-time recognition of your account of accounts receivable as a liability account in accrual accounting. If you really want to get into it. Um, so he's asking permission to actually recognize it in the accrual accounting system in your financial statement that feeds into your audit. To be able to go ahead and write that off it's on your books, yeah, yeah. because at that point, it, you know, you. But it's going to be the same number. Look, there's yeah. no requirement. It's just a, a. There's no requirement to do this. The auditors have made mention of it. Uh, there's no requirement to do this. We can carry. We can continue to carry. Obviously, these numbers have grown. This is the 23 audit. This is. I've done the numbers for 24. These numbers have now grown. Can I ask the question? It's probably going to sound it, as stupid as it is. Any, any question you want? Who does this make a difference to? Uh, it extremely simplifies a computation, and the auditors appreciate that. Who makes that. the computation? Me. Okay, so we're helping you. Helping okay. me and the auditors having to audit the computation. I got you. I got you. So what you're telling us is it deletes it off of this, we'll call it a balance sheet. It is, yes, sir. But it does not delete the fact that this person owes us X amount of money. That is absolutely correct, sir. That's okay. exactly what I'm saying. Okay. Well, I'll make a motion to approve this policy. Second. Any more discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. And that is all I have, guys. Thank you so much. Does anybody have any new business or old business? Oh, you want to set us time for the? We'll leave that to the uh, the real chairman. Set the time up. Let's need one more motion. Motion adjourned. All right, we're adjourned.